Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Renewable energy project developer Solar Capital last month inaugurated the second phase of its The R Solar Farm project in the Northern Cape, with The R3 adding 90 megawatts of capacity to the overall project. This was in addition to the first phase of the project, the 85 megawatt The R1 Solar Farm, which came online in August 2014. David Oliveira has the story. Media and dignitaries were invited to attend the inauguration of the 175 megawatt solar farm, which Solar Capital Chairperson Pascal Fellin noted would provide electricity for between 75,000 and 100,000 South African homes. It is the largest uh, solar farm ever built, Southern Hemisphere, Africa, Middle East, and despite all the big gigawatts they've built in Europe, this is the second largest farm even compared with Europe. Department of Energy Minister Tina Jomat peterson congratulated Felon on delivering the project, which she said could be the blueprint for further solar projects in South Africa and that the project showcased the Northern Cape's potential to be the solar capital of the world. We are particularly happy that the Northern Cape has been part of this development. We believe that um, this plant and the success of this plant could just be a blueprint for what we can do in the future. I have no doubt that the success of this plant could be replicated in the rest of South Africa and in the rest of Africa. Joe Matt Peterson asserted that the success of this project highlighted the potential for the Northern Cape to become a leader in solar energy production, stating that the Northern Cape had the capacity to become the solar capital of the world. Meanwhile, Northern Cape MEC McCollin Nsikalelo Jack points out the importance of solar energy in diversifying the economy of the province. As the Northern Cape, our challenge is moving away from mining, agriculture to renewable energy. And this is an indication of what we can do to grow and build the economy of the Northern Cape. We hope and trust that we'll be holding hands, collaborating, cooperating with the private sector to ensure that we address the first point of the nine-point plan that we are having, provision and ensuring that there's adequate energy for our country. An investment of 5 billion rand was made into the first two phases of the Da'ar project, with 25% of the investment equity financed by local companies and the Public Investment Corporation. The remaining 75% had been financed through loans from Standard Bank South Africa and Deutsche Bank in London, in the UK. At its peak, 2,000 people were employed, with 90% of the people coming from the local community. There were currently about 220 people working on site, with a further 120 people to be employed to maintain the solar farm once the final two phases of the project were complete. The next phase, the 86 megawatt to R2, formed part of the Extended Renewable Energy Independent Power Producer Procurement Program for BID. This farm here uh, is capable of taking four phases and we have planning permission for to do uh, 300 megawatts on this farm. Uh, we finished phase one about a year ago and then immediately started phase two and we have connected phase two today making a total of 175 megawatts. We'll be hope to be back here in two to three years time saying that we have 300 megawatts on this farm and it still is the largest one around. Reporting from Solar Capital's solar farm in Da'a, the Northern Cape, I'm David de Oliveira from Engineering News. Other news making headlines this week, an overnight passenger rail service between Lombatse in the south of Botswana to Francistown, about 500 kilometers to the northeast on the Zimbabwe border, is being reinstated using modern coaches built by Transnet Engineering in South Africa. At a recent launch event in Lombatse, President Ian Kama outlined government's vision for the reintroduced service, which was suspended in 2009 owing to the poor state of the previous coaches. The railways has procured, I believe, around 37 coaches to operate the service between Lobatze and Francis Town. The service will initially be operated as night trains on a daily basis. This train service, I'm told, will be called BR Express. The name derives and denotes the elegant service that Botswana Railways plans to give to its customers. The train will initially stop at six strategic locations in Robazi, Khaburoni, Mahalape, Palape, Sirule, and Francistown. 
This is in view of considering the introduction of commuter trains in the future. As you're all aware, September the 30th this year, 2016, will mark our 50 years of our country's independence. We have a number of events lined up to celebrate our 50th anniversary as a united and proud nation. The reinstatement of the passenger train service also forms part of our activities of pro or projects lined up to celebrate our 50th anniversary as a country. The newly procured coaches, passenger coaches that are launching will transverse our country carrying the BOT50 logo. It is now therefore an honor and privilege for me to declare the BR Express, our passenger train, officially launched. That's Krima Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.